Well, hello, hello there, Mr. White. <laughs> hello there, Mrs. Angel. What was that? What I don't know. I had a little false, had a little false a little start. False I don't start. know. It's uh, yeah. Hello. It uh, happens to 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 the best of the uh, the producers and. Clearly. Radio hosts and, and podcast wannabes. How are you doing? Uh, you're back at work. I'm very well. Yes, I'm back at work. First week of term this week for me. It is uh, full on. It is full on. Uh, you know what it is. First week back of term. It's great to see everyone. Good to get back in the swing of it. But at, uh, gee, at the end of that first day, uh, you turn to the teacher next to you and go, gee, is it the end of week already or what? What's going on? Yeah. It's quite long. This took so long to get to midterm. Gee, this term's <laughs> dragged on. Yes. I, yes. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> How are you going? I, uh, I, uh, so we're at the end of week two mm. for us, obviously. Well, getting close, not quite there yet. Mm. Uh, and yeah, it's we're kind of past the uh, enthusiasm of week one, and <laughs> then now we're well and truly strapped in for the the term ahead. But we've we have we've got off to a, a, a very good start. The the winter. The seasons have changed in uh, Brisbane, so it's gotten two degrees uh, cooler. Yeah, that's right. Those, what seasons? Uh, I mean, yeah, so yeah. It's, two degrees. It's like tw- it's twenty-one degrees, so everyone's wearing their winter coats, obviously. Oh, and that. but the, but and the flu is is coming at us uh, thick and thick and fast. So yeah, that's, so that's that's what term two always yeah. always does for us. It does. But it does. The the, our, the temperature does stuff, drop. It gets a bit crappier weather and. Uh, yeah, that's, it's a change of season. A staff of troopers. Well, that's what you need. Yeah. You need to have a, a staff of troopers to fire on and to soldier on. That's what you want. We do. Yeah. And they, they're tagging in for each other and it's beautiful and always another opportunity for me to teach, which is great, <laughs> which is which is always the best part of my that's day. That's brilliant. Um, that's brilliant. And always an un, sometimes an unexpected part of my day, but it's a, it is a glorious part Get away part of from my that day, principal's definitely. desk and get back into the classroom. Well, funny you should say that. Yeah. Um, because we are doing this thing mm-hmm. at work that's that has really uh, gotten out of control. Oh, yes. So I see as you're sipping on your wine, mm-hmm. and uh, our loyal viewers on YouTube will see um, that I'm not mm. sipping on wine because this thing happened. This thing happened, and <laughs> this thing happened. Uh, that is sucking all of the joy out of me, oh. which is uh, so my beautiful office manager and I decided that we're going to get our health in order and we're just we're going to start eating healthier and uh, we were going to do that quietly and just bringing in healthy lunches for each other and and then do you remember uh, the culprit in Coffee Gate, the oh. man who has been fattening me up, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan. Yes. Jonathan on the Jonathan. front, yes, at my. Administrate, uh, administra. Oh my god! Are you I, sure you're I, not I haven't drinking? been drinking. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. One of our admin officers on the front desk. Mm. He got wind of what we were doing, and then he wanted in. Jonathan is very competitive. All right. Jonathan then wants to turn this into a competition. So all of a sudden, just a quiet commitment amongst friends and colleagues has turned into office wars where apparently I've now agreed to a weekly weigh-in and uh, and uh, a wager there's money on the table but which is which is important but less important is that also on the table is my desk my office yeah. so the winner for 3 days gets to choose the desk out of mine principals the uh, oh, the principal's desk mm-hmm. the office manager's office mm-hmm. or the front desk where Jonathan sits. <laughs> so so it would appear. Describe the front desk for us. <laughs> oh, that's it's the front line. It's absolutely the front line. The parents will love me being on the front de- desk. I'm going to be more. I could be so accessible uh, on that front desk to every conversation that anybody's ever had at the front of their mind. And Jonathan will be sitting pretty in my office, mm. um, wow. just living the dream. And if I need a parent meeting, I will have to beg him. Could I please use your office? Can I borrow your please, office, uh, Mr. Jonathan. What an amazing yeah. thing! Not many schools have the principal answering the phones. No, no. Nope. It's good. I think nope, we could catch I, on. I, I, I also, I'm going to work really hard to maintain uh, my desk. So, yes. hence, I'm not drinking wine midweek. I'm not totally off the wine. Uh, I don't want all joy removed from my life. Mm-hmm. So just on 
weeknights and we're still unsure if Sunday night is a is a weeknight. Uh, Friday night definitely isn't a weeknight. There's a lot of rules around this in my head. Of, yeah. I can write you a book and let you know what's what. Um, but, yeah, come come on the journey with me. No. <laughs> no way. Um, no chance. <laughs> okay. No chance. But we can we can lawyer our way through this, try and lawyer our way through. I don't think Sunday night mm. – well, Sunday night really is the extension of Sunday afternoon, and Sunday afternoon is definitely the weekend. Fantastic. All right. So help you just out because there. it's leading into a school day, so fr- it's fine to have drinks on uh, Sunday. So what about a Friday? What's your rules on a Friday Absolutely. night then? The weekend starts right. at 3.30 on a Friday. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you very much. You heard it here first, people. Uh, <laughs> there you go. That's the rules uh, dictated by Whitey. And Jonathan, if you're listening, please play by those rules as well because I don't want you running on the no weekends. Cheating. and No cheating by eating clean on the weekends. You've got to eat really badly on the weekends and just keep it tight on the on the weekdays. Well, this is a noble pursuit. Do you, can you doctor the scales or can you do some sort of skullduggery? Can you uh, step I, down I, from your moral high horse and cheat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Well, check in with me in week eight and uh, just before that, that one week to go, and we'll we'll know the progress. So at the moment, um, I'm in second place by a hundred grams, and mm. uh, and uh, Jonathan is coming last. Uh, he's two hundred grams behind me. So it's really only Jonathan that I don't want to beat me because I'd be happy in my office or um, or Yvonne's office. Okay. So well, it might work just out. the front. We'll see. Mm. We'll see. So watch this space. Um, well, good luck to you. And thank you very much. Cheers. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's so nice to have the support of a friend. Uh, just... Oh, you're welcome. No worries. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I feel your suffering. I, um... If anybody's <laughs> listening on the podcast right now, Mr. White has just finished his glass of wine. And he's, I thought that was it for the night. No, no, he's just he's just topped it up. Um, just <laughs> Not an animal. Just... No, you're not. All right, let's talk spiraling upwards, yes. my friend. Good one. Uh, what's what's the question? Well, this week's spiraling upwards question is: talk about one thing you used to want as a teacher that you now see as less important. What's something you used to want as a teacher that you now think is less important? What do you right. Reckon? So, I've agonised over this one, mm-hmm. and. Uh, but it's it's a it's good. It's made me think very deeply. And what I have come up with is that what I used to want was perfection. So, and now I definitely see that as less important. And in fact, I don't. It's not just less important. I don't see it as important at all because in teaching, perfection is not attainable, and that's okay. That's perfect. We we. It's not possible to have a perfect lesson. It's not possible to be a perfect teacher, a perfect principal. And it's actually, there's a lot of beautiful in the grey. And so (laughs) embracing embracing the grey, I previously was very black and white and I've spent the last two years embracing the grey and stepping away from the that, that perfection, perfectionist thinking. I don't, I'm not looking for it in staff members anymore. And I'm quick to identify it in, uh, in, in my staff to let them know that that's, that's not going to be good for their mental health, Mm. um, going forward. So anytime, the earlier you can shake it off and embrace the gray, I think is, is going to be better for mental health. Yes. Done is always better than perfect. Not done. Yes. Absolutely. 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 I reckon that's great. Um, I'm the same. And I, I, I find that I struggle with procrastination because of me wanting to be perfect. So I will put things off waiting for that perfect moment to execute. And as a result, it just pushes it down the road and it never gets done or it yep. doesn't get done in a timely fashion. And then I get frustrated because I feel rushed when I'm doing it. So yeah, I think uh, jump in and, and do it rather than get it started, get it, yeah. get it, get it done. And yeah, and then and then reflect on it. I'm a big like reflecting is great um, to then do a little bit of refining, mm. but it's not re, it's not then you know total overhauls to then make make everything perfect. Yep. It's not possible, yep. not achievable. Absolutely, let it go. Let it go. I'd sing the song. Make like Elsa <laughs> yeah. and let it go. That's right, and just let it go. <laughs> All right, how about you? Uh, 
Yes, this is a great question, um, and I'm glad that it's it's causing some some deep thought. Um, I think when I was younger, I remember a time at the second school I taught at, I got my first year 12 class, and I taught year 11 a few times, but never the year 12. Um, and I remember really putting so much effort in trying to make everything perfect, similar similar sort of thing, but I was trying to impress my head of head of English at the time. And I remember her, she said to me, this is Greta Caruso, her name is, and she taught in Melbourne, and um, shout out to Greta. She's um, Hi, Greta. Hey, Greta. Uh, she remains, even though I don't catch up with her very often, she does remain in my mind uh, regularly because she made it clear that it's not about perfection, that it's not about impressing people. It's about doing the job the way that you want to see it done and learning as you go. So don't try and be perfect for someone else. If you want to use that, um, or don't try and do things just to impress someone else. If you want to use that for your own self-betterment, be aware that that's why you're doing it. You're not yeah, doing nice. it because um, you want to try and impress someone. So that that yep. stuck with me. Um, that's great. Yeah, I thought that was really good advice. And she was, she was great with that sort of stuff, Greta. She was really, really good. Um, shout out, Greta. Thank you for that pearl of wisdom. Yeah, that's, that's great. A good one. And it, because it, 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 you should be in, uh, you should be choosing your actions based on what your students yes. need. What's, uh, and when you start to do things to impress other people, we there's only so many hours in every week, and yeah. so much that you can invest in your kids yeah. and investing time trying to impress um, a colleague or a superior. Yeah, yeah, it, it, you're right. It's, it's, it's a focus of attention in the wrong place. Yeah, mm. yeah. Great, question, great advice. One. Yeah, yeah, Good love question. it. And I, my, my beautiful um, teachers at my school, they put up a spiraling upwards question uh, in the staff room each week, and then obviously also share it with me, looking to see. And this was the one that they put up this week on Monday, which is why, why we were going to talk about it today. And I've, I've, I've spent four days trying to think about what my answer to that would be so mm -hmm. that's great and i'm looking forward to seeing my teachers answers rolling in as well because uh, lots of them are early career and then a couple of them are more experienced so it'd be very interesting yeah. to see even in a short career what's the what do they think that teaching was going to be like and what do they want and now what have they learned already it's a very good question no matter what stage of your career you're at yeah i wonder if there's some sort of pattern that you can ascertain mm. based on the length of being mm. in the profession that would be interesting Keep us updated. Stay tuned. Yeah. Stay tuned. I, like I will, along with the weight loss. <laughs> um, all right. You're doing well. Hang in uh, there. Hang in thank there. Thank you very much. It's, 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 we're nearly, we've started a podcast and I'm not drinking. Look at me go. Um, <laughs> all right. Off way we've too got, much. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel, oh gosh, don't tell me that. I'll put on weight just from biting no, it to no, way no, too much. And, no, um, oh, no, I'm, I'm here okay. to support you. You're going to do really, really well. Thank you. Thank you. If you're once again not watching on YouTube, Mr. White just drank more of his oh, wine. All right. Mm. Um, we have had some amazing content sent in to us mm. over the last couple of weeks, and we're really excited to share it with everybody as each of these episodes roll out. So we're going to kick off with a, a magical moment that has been sent through to us. Uh, and... She is uh, from Victoria and has a lovely story to share. Here we go. A magic moment I'd love to share with you is about a year 10 student that I had actually in my first year of teaching. And he was doing year 10 maths and was working pretty hard. And after the semester one exam, his result was pretty poor. And I remember handing his exam paper back to him and seeing his face fall and tears prick in his eyes. And so I quickly said, sent him away to get a drink of water so we could have a moment. And after he got that exam back, we sat together and we talked a lot about uh, studying, study skills, strategies for studying when it comes to maths, what worked for him with his learning styles and so on. And he continued to work hard and we also spent a bit of extra time together each week outside of class, just so he could clarify everything you know, he wasn't sure about. And I watched him really, really work his work his butt off for the rest of the year. And then come the end of year exam, um, I remember marking his exam thinking, oh, I really hope he's done well. 
And he ended up getting 84%, which was about 40% more than he'd got in the first semester. And I was so pleased for him and I was so excited to hand his paper back. Anyway, I was handing the exam papers back in the class and I got to him and I just handed it to him in the same way I had to everyone else, but I couldn't help but pause and wait for his reaction. And I saw his face go, oh my God. And he said, Miss, can I text my mum? And I said, yeah, sure. That's one very good reason to get your phone out in class. And so he was just so proud of himself and so happy with his result, which was well-deserved because he had... Um, <laughs> He had worked really hard for it. And then the cherry on top was a couple of years later, I actually bumped into him at a local cricket game. And he was in first year uni and studying engineering. So he, he'd ended up doing really well in maths in his whole schooling career. Um, but it was really amazing to be a part of that turnaround for him. How good's that? Love it. I love that. That's the lovely Anne. She's a good friend of mine uh, and she's wonderful. She is so good. And just, just to hear her speaking about that, I mean, you would have picked up the emotion in her voice there as well. Absolutely. It's still bringing back, um, you know, hair standing on end and goosebumps for her. It's Absolutely. fantastic. Absolutely, got goosebumps. Yeah, it's it's just and the fact beautiful. that he ended up doing engineering. I mean, you can't do that without a little bit of maths. How good is yep. that? And the turnaround of um, of that mindset for him, and mm. you know, and she, it's one thing to have a kid in your class not be successful, but then knowing that they haven't put any work in and they haven't tried, but it's a whole other. Uh, you just feel for a kid who you know has put some mm. effort in and does care about this and then the result isn't what they want. So to see that with hard effort and, um, you know, determination and the the love of a good teacher to just mm. uh, help him out every step of the way, that they, they he can t turn around his whole life and build a whole life off, yeah. on maths, basically. Yeah, and that time, wow. the time and energy investment for her to sit down with this student and um, – Take him through it outside of class time. Um, it's amazing dedication. And look, it, it look at that. Look at the outcome from that. Yeah. It's it's uh, amazing. That's exactly what we're after in our magical moments. So there's there's a lot of teachers and teacher aides out there uh, who are running after school tutoring, who are running after school homework clubs, mm. and just a shout out to to all of you for the extra work that you're doing with kids yep. beyond the classroom. And we know that often that it's hard to build a relationship with kids inside the classroom and it's, it is at those lunch times and, and sporting events and, and homework clubs and things like that where you can really build a great relationship with a, with a student and really make go, go that extra mile and see, see the students go on in leaps and bounds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Anne. What a legend. What a legend. Yes. So keep on sending those in, people. Uh, at the very least, you give me full body goosebumps every time I get to hear <laughs> one of those stories. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Awesome. All right, Mr. White, you get your wisecrack ready ah. right on the tip of your tongue. Here we go. What is weekly wisecracks? What do you got, Mr. White? Do -do 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 -do. All right, Mr. White. All righty. Well, this one, this one's a bit of a double banger, and it's going to require a little bit of input from you, Mrs. Angel. Okay. Oh, so, um, a few years ago, year tens or year elevens, can't remember what it was. We were doing public speaking, and we were talking about ways to engage the audience early, and we started talking about humour and the ways that you can use humour. Um, and we started talking about jokes that you could tell to get the audience on side, that sort of thing. And before long, some students started telling, you know, knock, knock jokes and all that sort of thing. And before long, I chipped in with my favorite one, um, which I'm going to get you to play with me now, if you wouldn't mind. Um, oh why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know. To get to the fool's house. Knock, knock. Oh, who's there? The chicken. <laughs> okay. All right. So I told the students, I told the students that one and, and uh, that, you know, obviously, obviously killed. Because um, oh, that's, that's my, slay, that's my favourite one. Um, but a few others were told and we got stuck on knock, knock jokes and a, a few of them told a few. And I said, oh, you, did you hear what happened to the guy who invented the knock, knock joke? 
They go, no, Mr. White, what? I said, he got the Nobel Prize. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> I, think I, li- I think I like that one more than you do, <laughs> clearly. But I, I think that's very funny. Nobel good. Prize. Oh. Uh, no cheering this week. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no. No, that's... But no, but, okay, but no booing. Hey! hey. It's good. Come on, there was Gosh, don't ki- double barrel. Don't kids just love it when you tell jokes with them? They love it. Sometimes, yes. They do. Sometimes. They do. Yeah, no, they do. And they, they, they love to laugh at your jokes and they love to roll their eyes. Yeah. No matter whether they find it entertaining or not, they just love it if you're telling a joke. Yeah, yeah. Maybe everyone who's listening... You take your best joke, your best clean joke, to school tomorrow and see how it goes. See how it goes. Roll it out. I dare you. I dare you. And let us know how it <laughs> Double goes. Double dare you. I, oh. uh, all right. Well, we're, we're changing things up with the teaching tale um, oh, yes. today. Uh, I'm going to be handing it over to Mr. White to, to, to tell the teaching tale. Also, a bit of uh, a tip in here as well for everybody to so get out your pads and paper and um, <laughs> pens and maybe write down uh, the big learning that Mr. White got out of this yeah. one. All right, here we go. Big learning. Teaching tales. Dun, dun, dun. All right, yeah, this, this is a, a very, very good learning experience for everyone out there. Um, we spoke uh, last week or a few weeks ago about um, – what we've learnt uh, and what was hard to learn. This was difficult for me to learn. Uh, so first year of uh, doing my uh, dip ed, I was on teaching rounds. So I'm still a student uh, doing teaching rounds and I'm at this private girl's school in, uh, in Brisbane. I was not there in Brisbane. And it was a Monday after I played footy on the Saturday and these phones had this newfangled thing called AirDrop, and I'd never heard of AirDrop. I didn't know what it was, but a mate of mine at the at the um, at the pub at the after footy on the Saturday night did know, and he wanted to show me some. He wanted to share some photos uh, from the footy a few weeks ago. So he said, "Well, why do you give me your phone? I'll set it up for you." So I let him do that, and he shared the photos with me, and it was all fine. Great, no worries. And so I'm teaching a class the following Monday, a few days later, and there's this giggling up the back of the room. I go, uh, girls, what's going on? And one of them sort of had their, put down their phone clearly and sort of said, um, are you whitey sex God, Mr. White? (laughs) So, so what, what had clearly happened is that, uh, this, this, um, wag, this, um, this full larrikin. larrikin uh mate of mine had put my name on on airdrop as whitey sex gods um and obviously made a fool of me because i was not technologically minded and still really am not that was i mean obviously that's years ago but um it's a really good tip for you out there either so what, what's your tip tell us either either turn your airdrop off and make yourself not mm-hmm. um you know you can make yourself invisible accessible or mm-hmm. change your name to uh, your surname and at least Lovely. have something that's appropriate uh, not like whitey sex god mm. yeah i uh, love it i think that's a very piece of sage advice and it's funny when um reminds me sometimes when some of uh, the parent emails that we have and i've had um over the career over my career mm-hmm. that you have to email back to um sally baby 69 um at at gmail.com or sexy sex (laughs) (laughs) just Uh, i don't know if we can just shake off our those email addresses from our 20s as well that would be it would be good Um, and and fix up your mm. uh, signature as well some people have some funny things on their signature yeah yeah i'm not going to give you examples but the, 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 the one i remember is um lover of chardonnay and whale and speaker of whale I don't know why I remember oh. that. I can't even remember who that was, but that's something that sticks out for me. Stuck in your Stuck mind. In my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Funny things you remember. Yeah. That's right. I love it. All right. Thank you. That's um, sage advice from the wise um, <laughs> hard, Mr. White. Hard-earned um, wisdom for you there. I hope everybody wrote that one down. Uh, don't fall into the same uh, the same terrible uh, black holes. Yeah, don't trust footy mates. Never trust footy mates. No. You know, no. Mm. I'll... 
I'll let our producer yeah, know. Yeah, might, I'm sure it wasn't it him. Might have been. It could have been. Yeah. Sounds like something he'd do. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. <laughs> um, so I've also got a teaching tip for today. Yes. Um, wanted to bring us home strong after that other ex- excellent teaching tip. <laughs> so something that I learned quite a few years ago, it's a great engagement strategy. And then since I've learned this, I have never had a classroom where I've taught in that doesn't have this in them. So every student to learn in all of my classrooms needs an individual whiteboard Mm. and a whiteboard marker and a piece of chucks cloth or a tissue or something to to rub it off with. So every lesson students are asked, you're doing retrieval practice, you're getting them to remember something, writing something down. Um, you know, this, what, you know, this, you can give a definition of a word. So what word am I talking about? They're going to write that down. Uh, They're going to give you a definition of something that you've covered in the yesterday's class. And then if you've just taught content, they're putting it on here and then they're going to chin it and they're going to show you, then the teacher can then see everybody's answers in the class. You're going to have much higher level of engagement. You're going to be very clearly be able to see who is engaged in the class and who is who is giving you an answer and what are the answers that they're giving you? What have they been able to retrieve? Mm. What do I need to reteach or, uh, or have they all got this? Excellent. Now I know for certain that we can move on. So it's a great fast paced, quick retrieval uh, method and a great way of getting feedback. There is nothing more valuable for a teacher than instant feedback. Yep. Fantastic. And it doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, it can be uh, one of these sleeves here and putting a white, a white piece of paper in it yep. uh, and then just a whiteboard marker and a pen. So it's not a, it's not an expensive um, endeavor to, to do it, but it's going to give you so much fast information. And for some reason, kids love writing on whiteboards or they, they just, they love it. And they, uh, I did a study once with some students in a class, a really low level math class, and I got rid of their books entirely and just replaced it with uh, white individual whiteboards and pens and the uptake of actually willingness to engage in the work was outrageously higher than when when they had books. And I I did some interviews with the students to ask them why that was the case. And they felt like because they could just rub it off with their arm really quickly, they weren't committed to the answer. They didn't feel like they were going to be judged on the answer as much. Um, So they could, if they were wrong, it was okay because they could just immediately erase it. Spectacular. So... Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Um, just have the what the the brain is is doing as uh, to make it a, a a less stressful environment and more willing to put pen to paper. Mm. So it doesn't matter what kind of pen, and a whiteboard is good. Obviously, you also want to try to capture the student work. So having a white a, a whiteboard, individual whiteboard, and a book is be, is better practice because then you can capture the learning that is happening within the class and can give grades on that and doesn't have to come down to your big summative assessment as well. Yeah. Amazing. So yeah. that gives you that, that instant feedback. How often do you do that? Would you do that in a class then? Well, at, uh, at my school in our daily reviews, uh, in maths and English. So we would, we do that for about 50 minutes each a day. So in the English and maths, um, the vast majority of the time it is on the individual whiteboards. Mm. So we can cover so much content really quickly. There's a lot of retrieval that we do constantly. But then when you're teaching new content, it's uh, it's more it's more so done verbally. And then when we're trying to capture that learning, it's done in their workbook. It's but we we are using um, individual whiteboards every five three to five minutes yeah, in in our schools. It'd be great for engagement yeah. as well because they're always so, so much always going to be called upon to to give yeah. something so, so that's... attentional control they know that they have to be doing something with it they see everyone else is um is writing oh gosh what are we what, are we, what was it what was the question okay now i'm in and i'm i'm doing it and there and it's it needs to be done quickly uh there's other kind of protocols around it as well you don't need to wait for every single student to finish before they chin it you've got to make sure the kids know that you just show me what you've got on your board when i tell you to, to show it to me rather than waiting for every student to finish writing everything out um but it's very yeah, very very effective great great tip what a wonderful tip i'm going to use that thank you very I'm much use that next week love it awesome mm. cool let me know how it goes i will fantastic awesome 
All right, we are just about out of time. So uh, we want people to get involved. Please get involved. It has been so joyful to receive your emails, to receive your videos. We have just recently made a Teachers Change Lives group, Facebook group that you could join and then you can put your content straight up there. Um, But then we also have a Facebook page. What's the difference? I don't really know. (laughs) I think that the the group, you can just automatically put your content straight up there with your teaching tales and your um, your magical moments uh, straight up onto the, into the group once you're accepted into the group. And, uh, but on the page, then you've got to privately message us. So Either way is all good. Mm. Uh, and obviously there's also that email address, teachers change lives podcast at gmail.com yep. that we also love hearing um, hearing from you. One thing that we haven't been getting a lot of recently is reviews though. Yeah, come on guys. Come on, step come up. Come on. Uh, just uh, going into Apple Podcast and then scrolling down and give us five stars and then tell us what you think. Tell us what you think. Only if it's good. Yes. Uh, if you don't have anything nice to say, remember, don't say anything at all. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. But one, one thing that has been hardening is that people have been um, asking to come on as a guest, Absolutely. Uh, which is fantastic. It really is fantastic. Yep. So we'll, we'll keep pumping those interviews out as well. Yep. We've got some very exciting ones mm. uh, coming up this term and, uh, and into next term. So great work. Spectacular. Keep in contact with us and you keep up the great work, Mr. White. You too, Mrs. Angel. Thank you. Look forward to checking in next week on all of the good stuff. All the good stuff. Uh, and, and, you know, good luck. remember, keep your fluids up, everyone. Um, <laughs> yes. keep, keep it clean yes. and keep, uh, keep rooting for me and not Jonathan. Absolutely. Uh, because we all know that he's trying to sabotage. Yeah, we're on team shares here for sure. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Fantastic. Awesome. All right. We'll be out of here. Catch you later, Mr. Thank White. Thank you. Catch you later, Mrs. Angel. Bye. Bye.